All right, guys, so today we're gonna demonstrate how to uh, prepare a lobster bisque uh, straight from well, a fresh lobster here. So first of all, we need to cook the lobster. So that's a live lobster, and this is the hardest part for most of you, is to cook the poor little guy that is live, but you wanna make sure that it is alive. That's how you know it's fresh. And you have to have a big pot of water, big enough to have the whole lobster going in, uh, boiling with um, water, but it's a, like very, very hot, like a rolling boil. So um, calculate your time depending on the weight. So weight your lobster. Uh, you wanna start with eight minutes for the first pound, and then add uh, three minutes per pound. So this one is a layer guy, so we're gonna do just nine minutes. It's just over one pound. Don't remove the elastic, or um, if you remove the elastic, right away it's gonna try to snap at you. So you can cook it with the elastic, so no problem. All right, so time to say goodbye. Put the lobster in. And then you cover right away with the lid. That's it, time on. And we wait. Now, um, you saw that I had a little bed here for my lobster. When you buy your lobster uh, fresh and alive, it's always best to, you wanna cook it the same day. So if you're not gonna cook it like instantly right away when you go home, uh, you want to keep it in a container like this, um, in the fridge, a container where it can't get out of, uh, and you just want to have something wet at the bottom, like a wet towel or a newspaper or something like this, but you don't want to have water sitting at the bottom. And most importantly, you don't want to put your lobster in tap water, because that's going to kill it, okay? So just have it in the fridge, in a container with something wet at the bottom, and that's it. But you always want to cook your live lobster the day you buy it. If you're not going to eat it the, the same day, that's fine. But at least cook it and then you can cool it down, put it in your fridge and you can always eat it another day. But you want to cook it the day you buy it. So uh, that's it. We're just going to wait for him to be cooked. We're going to prepare another tray uh, to take him out when he's cooked. And uh, that's it. I'll grab you guys when he's ready. Okay, time is up. Lobster is cooked. It's been eight minutes, so now we just want to get it out. So just have a plate ready, a pair of tongs, and grab this guy from out of here. It's obviously going to be all cooked by then, and change color to a bright red. So that's how you know that your lobster is all cooked, is when it changes color, and they're always bright red like this when they are cooked. So now, of course, we need to let it cool down a little bit. Um, if you're gonna put it in the fridge for later use, just let it cool to room temperature first and then put it in the fridge. Um, but if you just gonna go on with your recipe, just let it cool until it's uh, just warm enough to handle, okay? So we're just gonna set that aside and wait for it to cool. In the meantime, you can prepare your ingredient for the rest of the recipe. Okay, so as I forgot to mention before, you can actually put your lobster in an ice bath like this with some ice and some water to cool it down faster. So now that it's nice and cold, we are going to open it up. And what we want to do now is to separate the uh, meat from the shell. So we're going to open it in two to remove uh, the tail, uh, the meat in the tail. And then after that, you have to break those uh, claws to remove the meat as well. Sharp knife. And uh, we're just going to cut this guy. So you can first of all separate the tail from the rest of the body. And then put it flat like this or on the other side, whichever works better. And just kind of cut right in the middle. So be careful not to hurt yourself. Just press, putting some pressure like that. Cut it in two, just like that. And then you can. Uh, keep this gray um, matter here that we can use for the sauce, separate it from the meat. For the meat you want to keep everything that's white, so all the nice meat in there. We're going to remove this and set aside and we'll use that at the end of the recipe. So just remove it from the shell like this, put it on a separate container. And then for the claws, oh, you need something to break them, so 
if you have like for example a mid tenderizer you can use that to break them so be careful because they might uh, go a little bit all over the place it kind of gets messy right so break it just enough so that you can remove the shell and pull that nice piece of meat there this is like the best part This is in the meat. There you go. So you have also a piece of you know, cartilage here that you need to remove because that's that's really hard. You don't want to eat that. Keep that aside. So you keep going like this, separating all of the meat, and then once you separated all of the meat. You're gonna break all those pieces of carcasses in smaller pieces using your meat tenderizer or a hammer or something like this. So try to break it off in uh, a bunch of small pieces and we're gonna use that to make our sauce. And uh, same thing for the head, you can just uh, break the head in pieces. We're gonna keep everything, we are using everything in this recipe so don't throw anything away. Okay there we go, so I cut up all those pieces of um, lobster carcasses smallest pieces as possible and uh, put it in the pan there I'm not gonna lie it was uh, pretty messy I, you, you gotta make a mess kind of like to uh, to cut this in pieces and smash it so don't worry about the mess you do everything at once and then you move on so put all the pieces in there we're gonna add some olive oil to that so a good amount of olive oil so that we can roast it up so you put it in the pan on a medium medium high uh, temperature and then we're gonna cook the carcasses alone first for a good five minutes and after they're starting to look a little bit brown then we're gonna add uh, the rest of our vegetables so we prepare the vegetables here we have some chopped onions garlic and then uh, carrots and a celery here that we're gonna add and uh, yeah so Let's uh, cook this up first. Okay, so all of the carcasses have been cooking for the, the five minutes now. There is some nice browning happening. You can see at the bottom of the pan. And that's okay. Uh, if it's a little bit brown at the bottom, that's totally fine. So once it's nicely toasted like this, we're going to start adding the vegetables. So you start with uh, the onions. Okay. We're going to cook the onions for a few minutes and when they are nice and soft, next we'll add the garlic. Okay, so when the onions are soft and getting some color, we're going to add the garlic in and then cook for just a couple more minutes. And after a couple minutes, you can add the carrots and celery. Okay, so we added, after the garlic, we added the celery and the carrots, and uh, we let it cook for about three minutes. And now that the veggies are kind of halfway cooked, we're gonna sprinkle about two tablespoons of all-purpose flour on everything. Stir that and let it cook again for another three minutes. Okay, now that the flour has been cooking for about three minutes, we're gonna add the brandy. The real recipe calls for cognac, but as we all know, cognac is really expensive, so you can substitute with brandy. Just about um, a quarter cup, and then we're gonna let that evaporate a little bit. Just uh, let it cook for a minute or so. And next is the wine. Okay, after the brandy, we're gonna add the wine. So you want a, a dry white wine, like a Sauvignon Blanc. This one will do. You add about one cup of wine in here. Okay, just about one cup, and then we're gonna just leave it to simmer a little bit, just a couple of minutes until you cannot smell uh, the smell of alcohol anymore. In the meantime, you can prepare your herbs. The best is to tie all of your herbs together in a little bunch like this of um, 
you can use uh, some cheesecloth. Uh, so there is the thyme, rosemary and bay leaves in there so that it's easy to fish out of the stew at the end of the cooking. Okay, so let the wine cook a little bit, prepare your herbs. You can also prepare the tomatoes. You can use fresh tomatoes or canned tomatoes, about three whole tomatoes. And then I also have the tomato paste in there, but uh, one and a half tablespoon of tomato paste. This is what we're gonna add next. Okay, so after you let uh, the wine cook off a little bit, next is to add the tomatoes, herbs, and uh, the fish broth. So you can use a fish broth uh, just like this, the one that we sell in store. So that's a stock base and you prepare four cup of it. And you can add that. Um, I just happen to have some shrimp broth that I prepared on another occasion. Still a little bit frozen, but that's okay. You can add it in there. For shrimp broth is super easy to do. You just have to uh, remember to keep the shrimp shelf every time you eat you some shrimp keep the shelf and then you can make a really nice broth out of those that would be for next time i can show you how to do that there you go tomatoes tomato paste broth and herbs okay now we're gonna cover it bring it to a boil when it starts boiling turn it on so that it's simmering and let it simmer covered for 30 minutes Okay, so your bisque has been cooking, now simmering for 30 minutes. Now this is the step where uh, most of you are gonna think it's completely crazy. We are actually gonna blend everything through the blender. Yeah, all carcasses and everything. It's gonna be super noisy and it's gonna feel like your blender is gonna give up, but uh, you can only do that if you have a very good, very strong high speed blender, you know, like a Vitamix or such. Uh, if you don't have a very good blender, I would say just keep that step because you're not going to have a good result. Without the good uh, blender, uh, you're going to have um, a soup that's pretty grainy and sandy, so you don't want to do that. Um, so if you don't have the blender, just pass everything through a sieve and then press as hard as you can on everything to get all of the taste um, out of this um, carcasses and vegetables and everything. So press it, press it, press it as hard as you can. Now, if you do have uh, the right blender, uh, so we're gonna put everything in the blender. You might have to do it in two batches though, because it's a lot. Um, so we, I'm putting a little bit of the solid first and then a little bit of the liquid. And then we're gonna blend that on high. What it does is that by breaking all the carcasses pieces like this and blending it, you really get all of the good flavor out of those carcasses as best as possible. And then after we're still gonna pass it through a sieve, of course, we're not gonna just eat all of that. Um, but really the blending step is to get the best taste from the lobster carcasses, okay? So make sure to cover it. And because it's hot, uh, you wanna have an escape for the steam. So remove the top part of your blender here and then just cover it with a towel instead. And we're gonna start on low, right? Don't start uh, super high speed at first and then we're gonna slowly increase. Let's do this. Okay, and then slowly increase the speed. Once it's well blended like this, it's not going to be a smooth, complete, uh, smooth puree. That's okay, because we still have to pass it through sieve anyway. You're going to put this back into the pot. So you might need to use another pot in the meantime, if you're doing two batches. Okay, so we're using the pot where we cooked the lobster earlier. This, and you put it back on the stove simmer like this for another 15 minutes. So covered, simmering for another 15 minutes, okay? So blend everything, simmer again. Okay, so after you blended it and then you simmer it for another 15 minutes, now we, you're gonna pass it through a sieve on top of another pot. Uh, so grab the thinnest 
fancy, but you have something really, really fancy that catches all the little pieces of carcasses. Okay, so watch out because now your soup is nice and hot. Splash yourself with hot soup and just pass it through. So you might have to do this in a few batches as well. Okay, and then just uh, stir a little bit in the sieve like this to pass it through. Don't press too hard on it because you want to make sure that all those hot pieces are not getting through. Okay, so make sure that you have a nice liquid soup coming on the other side. So that's it. Do that with all of your soup. Okay, so now that we strain all the solid pieces, we have a nice smooth soup as you can see. So now it's just the finish, finishing touches. So you put it back on the stove on medium to keep it nice and, and warm. And then uh, next, we're gonna add the cream. So about uh, one cup of liquid cream, whipping cream, right in there. You can skip the cream if you want, but that really gives it its nice uh, creamy um, texture to it. That it's just so unbelievable. And then you're gonna add salt, pepper, and then uh, chili powder or um, cayenne to give it a little bit of a kick because that's really important in this recipe is to give it a little bit of spice um, the best spice that I recommend uh, because it's a French recipe will be using um, espalette uh, piment d'espalette uh, we carry this at the store but otherwise cayenne would be a good one so stir that warm it up and now you just have to try make sure it tastes good if not, keep adding salt, pepper, and uh, chili, and cream until you're happy with the taste and the texture of it. And uh, pretty much that's it. There's your soup. If you want to have an even more smooth texture, just in case it's still a little bit grainy, you can either put it back in your blender one more time or use an immersion blender to blend this uh, really, really smooth. But by now, it should be fine already. So don't forget to taste as you go. Mm. and adjust to your liking okay now we're gonna bring that to just a light simmer and get it ready for plating okay so last but not least is the plating uh, so to get ready for plating you have a nice bowl like this have your uh, pieces of reserved lobster meat uh, that we put aside earlier uh, you can warm them up quickly in a pan with a little bit of butter, just uh, fry them really quickly. Um, a little bit of cream to, uh, you know, just pour around for decor. Some chopped herbs, like uh, chopped dill if you have. And um, so we're just going to spoon a hot bisque in there. There you go, look at that color. Right? Should be like a nice copper color. Beautiful. There you go, and then just before serving, you're going to pile your little pieces of lobster meat right there in the middle. So you can, if it's the recipe for two, you can cut half of the lobster tail uh, in little pieces like this, and then also have one of those clamp as the final masterpiece like this on the top. For each person and then a little drizzle of cream all around just to make it look pretty the contrast of color it's really nice and then a little bit of green to finish and there you go you have your lobster dinner there you go lobster bisque with the lobster flesh right at the middle. It's a complete lobster dinner. You have used every single pieces in your lobster. Nothing goes to waste and it's just absolutely delicious. Thank you guys for hanging and hope you love it.